Hi, Kevin here. Well, for dinner tonight, I'm fixing a very simple chicken pie, and I do mean very simple. So here's the chicken. I have three pounds of skin-on, bone-in chicken thighs from my local farm store, and one pound of skinless, boneless chicken breast. And also from the farm store. And I'm going to cook the chicken in the Instant Pot, and I'll show you how I do that in just a moment. Then I'm going to take some vegetables from the freezer. These are peas and carrots, one pound. And I have some Southern style diced potatoes, AKA hash browns, also from the freezer. And this is about a quarter of a pound. And I will be cooking those in a pot on the stove. And then I'll make a white sauce and season it up. And I'm going to use a puff pastry crust for the pie. So I'll come back when I'm ready to put the chicken in the Instant Pot. All right, I've opened the bags of chicken. And I'm going to use the trivet that comes with the Instant Pot. This way I can pull the chicken out very easily. And I should mention that I do not rinse chicken uh, before I cook it because the FDA says not to. Apparently if there's salmonella on the chicken, if you try to wash it, the salmonella will go flying everywhere. I'm going to put the thighs in first. I'm going to put them skin side down, although you can put them in any way you like. And you just pile them in. And I probably won't need all of this chicken for the chicken pie, but it never hurts to have extra cooked chicken in the refrigerator because there's so much you can do with it. You can even feed it to your dog. Okay, let me get this out of the way. Then, and notice I use gloves. That's because I don't want to have to wash my hands every 30 seconds. Okay, now I'm going to add one cup of water to the pot. And then, on goes the lid. Let's see if I can put it on without any trouble. Yep. And then going to pressure cook for, oh, since the chicken breasts were still a little bit frozen, I'm going to do 15 minutes. Okay, and then we are good to go. So this is going to come to pressure. Uh, and if you have an Instant Pot, you already know that you need to move the uh, vent valve the steam valve away from the away from you so you push it that away okay and I'll come back when the chicken is ready and we're ready to assemble the pie now I did not add any seasoning to the chicken in the instant pot because I will be putting the seasonings in the white sauce that will hold all of the vegetables and chicken in a beautiful creamy suspension. Okay, I'll see you in a bit. All right, here are my chicken pieces all pressure cooked. And I have, oh, probably about two cups of stock remaining in the pot, so I will save that for soup. And then I'm going to just spread these out on the pans to let them cool rapidly. And then I will be removing bones and cutting up the pieces. And I did cook my potatoes and peas and carrots. I ended up doing them in the microwave for eight minutes and just a tablespoon or two of water. Covered it with plastic wrap. Very easy to do. And as I said, this is a very easy chicken pie. So now we can prepare the sauce right after I chop up the chicken. 
I wanted to show you that I am removing bones and skin and putting them in this bowl over here. And I'm, rather than cutting up or cubing the chicken, I'm just shredding it. Pressure cooked chicken is very easy to shred. And of course, wearing rubber gloves, which I did wash thoroughly. That's the great thing about rubber gloves. You can wash them in uh, dish soap very easily, just as if you were washing your hands. Okay, and we have plenty of chicken here. I'll probably use half of this, maybe not even half of this, for the chicken pie. So now, let's move on to the luxurious white sauce. Okay, so my oven is preheating to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And what I have in the saucepan is three cups of whole milk. That's full fat milk. And I'm just bringing this to a boil over medium high heat. And then I'll turn the camera back on when I've actually come to a boil. Actually, while we're waiting for the boil, we might as well go ahead and add the seasonings. So what I'm using is a nice pinch, oh, about a half teaspoon of kosher salt, plus some fresh grinds of black pepper. And since I didn't use any onion in the vegetable mix, I'm going to add about a teaspoon of onion powder. Not onion salt, onion powder. Yum. Yeah, I think onion powder and garlic powder are just super convenient. And stir that in. And then I'm also going to add, just for fun, some dried tarragon. Tarragon and chicken go really well together. I'll add, oh, about a half teaspoon. Yeah, tarragon, chicken, and mushrooms are really terrific together. Especially if you threw, throw some dry French vermouth into that mix. Now, why aren't you coming to the boil? Speed things up here. Come on, work with me. Work with me, baby! Well, I'll come back when this has finally decided to come to the boil. Alright, and of course, as soon as I turned the camera off, this thing came to a rolling boil and almost boiled right out of the pan. So now I'm adding three heaping teaspoons of just regular cornstarch that I mixed with a little bit of water just to make a smooth slurry. And this is going to thicken the works without having to make a roux. So this is a gluten-free white sauce. And then just stir. And I'm sorry about the metal on metal music here. Sometimes we have to make some noise in the kitchen. We have to bang around those pots and pans, right? This is going to get very thick very quickly. Never takes longer than 30 seconds to make uh, or to thicken a white sauce with a, with a cornstarch slurry. Okay, I think we are looking good here. You know what? I think I want to show you how you can thicken the, the um, sauce a little more. And that's my oven telling me that it has achieved 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm going to add another heaping tablespoon of cornstarch to this bowl. And then I'll add a little water. And then you just stir until you make a smooth slurry or a smoothish slurry. Pour 
put in. Yeah, I think I want a really thick white sauce. Super thick, super luxurious. Look at that. It's really thick. And no lumps like you would get from a flour and butter roux. Okay. Our sauce is done and it smells wonderful. So now we can go over and assemble the pie. All right, so here's my chicken and I am going to bake this pie in a nine by 13 dish. And I did spray it with vegetable spray. In goes the chicken. I would say that's about two cups of shredded chicken. And then I'm going to add the vegetables, the peas and carrots and diced potatoes. I don't know if I'm going to use all of these. Oh, I probably will use all of them. Oh, this is the wrong end. And then I want to mix everything together so that the peas and carrots are in one place and the chicken another. I spilled some of this, but that's all right. And what would a household be without a complaining cat? Hi, tiger. Eat the temptations I gave you. Temptations are little cat treats. Okay, now I want to add the wonderful, super rich, super thick white sauce. Grab me spatula. Because we can't let any of this white sauce go to waste. I'll give this another little stir. Yeah, so the white sauce actually holds all of the, the chicken and vegetables in a beautiful velvety suspension. It is the glue that binds everything together. And now we are ready to, as Tiger just announced, we are ready to apply our crust, which, in order to make Mr. Fox happy, I am using frozen, fod, gluten-free puff pastry. And let's see, is this going to be long enough? Nope, sorry, I have to roll this out a little bit. Hold the fort. You out of the way. Yeah, you just have to make this, it's wide enough, but it's not quite long enough. Although I think it is the same measurement as the Pepperidge Farm uh, regular wheat-based puff pastry. And I should, probably shouldn't be doing this on a cutting board that has a hole in it. Come on, Kevin. Okay, let's see if this is going to be long enough. Here, I'll just go like this. Yeah, I think this gluten-free puff pastry is vegan. Not that that matters when you're making a chicken pie. Let's see if this is going to work. Yes! That was lucky. Okay, and then I'm actually going to turn the sides towards me, the, the little overhang. 
and there ain't much overhang. And then, to apply an egg wash or not, I think I'll apply an egg wash. Hang on. Okay, so this is one egg beaten with a scant teaspoon of water. And what the egg does is helps the pastry top to turn a beautiful golden brown. It's easier to do it this way. Yeah, I'm using my silicone brush, which is not great for applying egg wash, but my bristle brush tends to shed bristles when I use it. And that's no fun either, because who wants to be eating a pie crust that has bristles in it? Kind of like eating a hairbrush. Okay. That looks good. And then, so that the pie doesn't explode in the oven, as fun as that might be, uh, you want to make some air vents. I'm just going to make some little holes. There we are. This is ready for the oven. I'm going to bake this until the crust turns a beautiful shade of brown. And that will take probably 30 minutes, although I will check it after 20 minutes. Remember that all of the ingredients inside are already cooked. So we're really just cooking the crust. Okay, and I'll come back when this is finished. And here it is, our very simple chicken pie straight out of the oven. As you can see, the puff pastry didn't rise the way that a regular wheat-based puff pastry would rise, but that's okay. It still turned a nice bronze color. And I have to tell you, the smell is fabulous. I can also smell the, uh, that little hint of tarragon that I added. That was not a mistake. I'll let this cool for about 10 minutes, and then we can have a taste of it. Okay, I only let it cool for three minutes, but look at this. The peas and carrots and potatoes and chicken are all held in that really thick, creamy, uh, white sauce suspension. Let's have a little taste. This is going to be hot. Oh, this is delicious, you guys. Chicken. I hear a cat fight between Binky and Tiger. Binky is trying to play with Tiger, and Tiger wants nothing to do with Binky. This is so good. I hope you'll give it a try. Well, for such simple ingredients, this chicken pie is truly wonderful. I hope you'll give it a try someday. Uh, since this is a totally improvised recipe, and there's a lot of wiggle room with ingredients, I'm not going to post a printable recipe on my website, but I will post all of the ingredients that I used for this particular pie down in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a comment if you have a moment. I do read all of your comments and I love hearing from you. Okay, I'll see you very soon with another recipe. Bye for now. Okay, we are back and I wanted to show you that because I made that white sauce so thick, look at how cleanly the pie cuts out of the pan. So I don't have a runny mess all over. Really good, you guys. Okay, thanks again for watching. Bye for now.